The next one is a bit tricky. Uh, so, the third solution is to use something known as hierarchical softmax. This is a bit uh, counterintuitive in a sense, it is a very smart trick, but it is not something which is very obvious. Uh, so, just pay a bit attention on this, right? it is a neat way of handling this large vocabulary thing, and this is uh, I think used in various NLP applications where speed is important, not often, but wherever speed is important. So, this is what our original network was. This was the Either you take it as a skip gram model or you take it as a continuous bag of words model. Right? Let us take it as a continuous bag of words model. You had a word as the input and then you had this large prediction and you had this uh, softmax computation which gives you the probability and you are trying to maximize this probability for the correct word, right? where VW is the correct word. Okay? Now, instead of this, the hierarchical softmax says that you construct a binary tree such that your tree has how many nodes? V nodes. Okay, it has one node corresponding to every word. Okay. And, uh, and there exists a unique path from the root node to every leaf node. Every leaf node corresponds to a word and there is a unique path from the root node to leaf node. Of course, there will be overlapping things. For example, for this word, the path is these nodes and for this word also the path is like there is some overlap in the path, okay. but for every word there is a unique path. How many of you get that set up? Okay, fine. Now, let L w 1, L w 2 up to L w p be the nodes on this path. So, I am calling this as L w 1, L w 2, L w 3, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, actually it is, so actually this is L on 1, L on 2, L on 3. That means, the third node on the path of on, the second node on the path of on and so on. Right? That is how it is going to be. Uh, and let pi w be a binary vector. So, what is the size of pi w actually? Binary tree log of e. Right? So, the size of uh, pi w vector is going to be log of e. So, if there are 8 leaf nodes, you will have 3 nodes as the size of the vector. So, for each of these things, this vector takes on a value 1. So, here the value would be 1, because the path branches to the left. If the path branches to right, then the value is going to be 0. right? So, for every node or every word, I have this way of uniquely defining its path. I can say that the path is 1, 0, 0. Is that fine? For the word on, the path is 1 0 0. If I consider some other word, the path would be different. Is that fine? Okay. And of course, I have assumed there are only 8 words here, right? that is why this holds. If there are either, otherwise I would have a vector whose size is log v. Right now, my v is 8, so it is just 3. Okay. Uh, finally, each of these internal nodes is associated with a vector. Okay. So, I have u 1, u 2, u 3. So, how many of these would I have? If there are v nodes at the leaf, how many non leaf nodes do you have in the binary tree? v. You all know this, right? So, if you have v nodes at the leaf, then you will have v nodes internal. So, for each internal node, I have a vector associated with it. So, how many vectors do I have in all? u v. And my input side is still the same, right? I have this w word or w context depending on whether it is a skip gram or by gram or uh, continuous back of words model. Okay. How many of you get the setup? Why we are doing this is not clear, but at least the setup is clear. What we are trying to, I mean what is the setup is clear. right? Okay. So, how many parameters does this model have? Is it same as the bag of words model or less than the bag of words model or more than the bag of words model? This is how you will think. You will see how many input parameters do the two models have? How many output parameters do the two models have? Input parameters, same. Output parameters, how many vectors do you have? U 1 to U v, each of size k, same as the original model, right? It's just as in the original model, I had put everything inside as w uh, context, which was k cross v, right? So, it is the same number of parameters. Is that fine? Everyone gets that? Okay. So, the total number of parameters in the network is the same. Now, for a given pair w comma c, which is the 
a correct pair, we are interested in the probability P of W given V C. Nothing great about this, it is the same as I have been saying always that we want the probability of W given C, but we are going to model as W given V C, because V C is the representation of C. And we model this probability now as the following thing, why does this make sense? So, just assume this is on and these are on k's right. So, on 1, on 2, on 3, why does this make sense? I will get the word on at the output only if the first element on the path was pi on 1 and the second element on the path was pi on 2 up to the kth element on the path was pi on k. How many of you get that? Please raise your hands, okay, right. So, that is how we are modeling it, is it okay? But what about pi on 1, pi on 2, pi on k? How do you model that? At least this form is clear to everyone, right? If it is not, let me know, because then you will not understand the rest of the stuff. Yeah, okay. So, now see the modeling part is always in your hands, right? You know that you want, you are interested in a certain probability, it depends on you how to model it. So, now what you have done is you have constructed a binary tree. Now, I am interested in P of on given some word V c, right, or some word vector V c. Now, I can say that the way I am thinking about this is that I will get the word on only if the first, if I started from the root node, the first vector took on the value 1 or the first uh, branch took on the value 1, the second branch took on the value 0 and the third branch took on the value 0. So, that is exactly what I am saying here. Right? It is the probability that the first turn that I took was a left turn, then a right turn, then a right turn. Yeah, the path is you have constructed the binary tree and right? the path is fixed now for all the words. How to construct a binary tree is a separate thing, but the binary tree has been constructed and every word has a unique path associated with that. So, that word will occur only if that path is executed. Right? So, I am just trying to find the probability of that path being executed. Now, I need to tell you what are each, so how many uh, terms are there in this product? k terms, right. How do I estimate each of these k terms is what I need to tell you, okay. Can you think of it? How would I model each of these probabilities? Remember that every node has a vector associated with it. How many of you can think of an answer? I hope I, I you are saying what I think you are saying. Uh, so, this is what I will do. So, as I said for the on example, this is what you want, this is the path that you want to be executed and I am going to model it as this. So, getting a left turn, I model it using this, that dot product between the original word vector which was the input word vector which was V c and the node representation of the node associated with that particular node. Does this make sense? So, I will tell you what we are trying to do. So, this path was clear that the probability is going to be a product of these probabilities. Now, I want how do I get each of these probabilities. So, that is again in my hand, right. I am going to say that I am going to train my parameters V c and U i, where U i is the parameter corresponding to every node. I am going to train it in a such a way that whenever I want this to take on the value 1, this should be close to 1, okay, because I will set up my loss function accordingly, we will see the loss function. But I am saying that whenever I want the probability to be equal to 1, I am going to use this to compute it. And alternately, when I want the probability to be 0, I am going to take 1 minus that, which is just this, is that fine, okay. Let us go ahead a bit and then we will come back if you are still lost, right. So, so what does this actually ensure. This ensures that the representation of a context word V c will have a very high similarity with the node U i, if the path takes a left turn there and it will have a very low similarity with the node U i, if the path takes a right turn there. How many of you get this part? Based on if you assume that this is how we are going to model it, when is this going to be high? when the dot product between V c and U i is high. When is this going to be low? When the dot product between these two is low, right, there is a negative sign. Yeah, so we, uh, oh, okay, okay, sorry, yeah, yeah. Or rather, when is this going to be low, right, okay. 
So, you get that. So, it is coming. So, the word representation which is V c which is this guy would come to the come close to all these representations or move away from them depending on whether you want to take a left turn there or a right turn there. Okay. Now, what would happen to words which appear in similar contexts? The same thing that we have been discussing so far, right? They will come close to the node representations which are along the path, right? Is that fine? So, this is the context representation, right? This is actually you are representing every context word by these three representations. Now, if a word appears in the same context, its representation is going to either come close or move away from these representations, right. So, if words appear in the same context, if you have cat and you had sleep here, then cat has to come close to this, it has to move away from this and it has to move away from this. Is that clear? That is how we have set up the priorities. Now, instead if I had dog and again you had the context word as sleep, now the representation of dog also has to go close to this, it has to move away from this and it has to move away from this. So, in effect again the same thing is happening that the representation of cat and dog are moving in the same directions. So, they will eventually come close to each other. How many if you get this intuition and uh, how many computations do you need now to compute the probability of this? So, earlier you required that co complex uh, softmax computation. How many computations do you need now? You definitely need these many computations and each of these computations requires a a sigmoid over a dot product, right. So, that is much much lesser than, so you just need these many dot products as compared to your expensive softmax computation earlier, okay. So, you see how you get the savings using the hierarchical softmax. So, this is as I said this is uh, not very intuitive, it is like a really smart trick and uh, it takes time to get your head around it, but I am sure if you go back and look at the slides you will get it, right. If it is okay if you have just got 50 percent of the idea here, that is typically how it happens every time. But and I have probably not figured out a better way of teaching this, but once you go back I am pretty sure that you will get to understand what is happening here, right. So, now the question is how do we construct the binary tree? Anyone has any thoughts on that? Do we need to ensure certain things while constructing the binary tree? Okay, I will ask this as a quiz question, okay just note that. There is some subtlety here, uh, in practice this is what is done you just randomly arrange the nodes on the leaf nodes and then you just construct a binary tree from there, right. So, you have distributed all your leaf nodes randomly and on top of that you have constructed a binary tree. My question is, is there a problem in doing that, right. So, I will ask you this on the <laughs>